Welcome to the Mycroft, 30th of September, DevSync meeting. So we're mid-sprint, and uh, we're just going to do a real quick check-in to see how things are going. If there's any blockers um, or any uh, news, uh, I don't think we need to go through each, each issue, issue by issue, uh, but uh, you know, just give us a, a quick update. Uh, starting with guests. Um, uh, yeah, so the, I, I put up a, a branch, um, with a new Jenkins file to, um, copy across the, the Minecraft logs, um, when we run Goit Conf. Um, it, it seems like the, going the, the proper route, um, and using the attachments in a Lua is probably going to be far more difficult than... I originally anticipated because um, that's all handled by a, an independent package, so we'd need to support <coughs> that and maintain our own fork, which um, just seems like more work than than we get out of it. Um, if that's not the case, then let me know. But that's my read of it at the moment. So um, anyway, I've done a branch with a new Jenkins file that, that um, I'll test out today. Um, I found a few bugs or um, actually, you know, figured out a few bugs that, or a bug that had been reported previously yesterday, um, thanks to Derek running into some audio issues and, and that sort of uncovered some stuff. Um, uh, so I had a chat with Oke okay about them yesterday and he was going to take a look at them when he got home from work. Um, so I need to go back and see if there's any um, success there, but they, they both come down to multiple messages being um, handling handling multiple messages um, within the message bus client and basically race conditions around that. Um, so uh, resolution is presumably you know better handling of that or ensuring that each call is is essentially unique in some way um, so that, you know, yeah, they can all be handled individually. Um, uh, so assuming those work out all right, I want to get back to um, taking a look at the lingua franca changes um, the last few days. Um, so we'll see how I go there. All right. All right, thanks. Um, I'll call on Ken because he just got up now. I'll just go. Uh... <laughs> Ken, are you? Uh... I, had to turn, I had to turn the AC down. Uh, no, I'm good. Uh, I've got everything integrated. Uh, <coughs> I had a couple of issues that blocked me a little bit regarding elevated privileges that I worked around. Um, the, uh, the point where I'm at right now is the switch handlers need to send out a uh, volume increase and decrease message on the message bus. That's uh, all that remains to be done. And then I'll put a pull request together. I was hoping to have that done today, but I got caught up in some stuff yesterday. The only question I have is if somebody can send me a link to the branch that I should be uh, cloning and creating my pull requests from so that I can get it submitted to the right place or at least um, update or refresh or pull, I guess is the technical term, from the proper branch that we're using. Um, once I have that, then I will create a new, you know, code line and, and then uh, submit a pull request to that branch. Uh, limited functionality, um, not really sure what the activate button should do short of maybe put turning on the listener, but I'm just not sure. That's that's what we do right now with uh, the, the equivalent of the action button on the Mark One. Should I return? Yeah, so I'll return that functionality. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. But I think eventually, yeah, we, we wanted to to maybe do some other things, but they're just, they're not fleshed out yet. I'm trying to avoid a round trip to say, hey, because remember the switch handlers are off in their own interrupt routines, and I'm trying to avoid a round trip to the message bus to say what's the current volume increase or decrease it by 10%. So I may actually add 
a call, a message bus handler that works off of a percentage uh, variance rather than a percentage value, which is what it does now. Mm -hmm. So right now you say, set it to 75%, set it to 50%, which is wonderful if you knew what the previous percent was, but if you don't, then you have several things you could do. I could query the message bus and say, what's the current volume setting? And then send out a message to change it. But that just seems like a really wonky way to do it. So I'll probably just send out a new message that will say, increase whatever it is, 10% or decrease of 10%. And that'll solve that problem. So I should have that ready to go. And once I have a uh, branch, I'll go ahead and again, <coughs> together. Uh, Right. Yeah, so that's, uh, so that's, that's interesting. Um, the This is actually coming from the button activation, so we shouldn't have any ambiguity on what that means. Uh, if you were to issue a verbal command like increase the volume by 10% or increase the volume to 10%, those could be very different things, right? If the volume is currently at 5%, one of them is going to set it to you know, 5.5 and the other one's going to set it to 10. Um, That's exactly right. But with the buttons, the interpretation, I, I would fix, I would think that we should have a, you know, a, a very predictable behavior, like it just goes up by 3 dB each button press or something like that, right? Yeah. Um, okay, but there is no such that thing. Suppose no such... you know what the value currently is. Um, Remember, there's three or four places where the volume is getting changed. There's a volume mm -hmm. skill. There's a QT Mark II skill. There's a Kivi Mark II skill. Uh, and there's the switches. So it's, it's, not, it's, it's really not a good idea to try to save that current value in all of those places. I mean, you know, I could have gotten crazy and said, listen for all volume changes messages on the message bus in a switch handler and update them. But that just seemed like the wrong way to do it. So it seems like the right way is every time you push the up button, it increases it by 10% every time or whatever, configurable percent, decreases it by some percent and let the, um, the destination of that message be the system of record for the current volume level and act on it accordingly. Isn't there a, so there's the switch handler, which is one thing, but isn't there a little bit of driver code that maintains the interface, you know, the volume control on the device itself, right? That's basically talking the about the IHC. The best of my knowledge, is stored in three separate places. The two different Mark II skills and the actual enclosure uh, code but, that changes. But I'm talking about the actual volume setting in the register on the amplifier chip. Yeah, that's, that's an I2C hit. Right. Right, and you can certainly pull it from there. Okay. And while I could certainly pull it using I2C from the switch handle or interrupt handler, that just seems architecturally incorrect. Okay, let's take this offline, and we're getting too far into the weeds. But uh, yeah, yeah, you know, anyway. I, I hear what you're saying. Well, the point is that's where I'm at, and we can talk about that later. Okay. The detail. Got it. Uh, okay, and um, so I assume it seems like you'll have that wrapped up by the end of this week, and. Well, I'll have the code ready to go. I certainly won't be able to test it until I get a working SJ201 that I can record on and change the volume. The uh, SJ201 here, uh, the old one, I can <coughs> probably still change the volume because the I2C device shows up. Not so on the new one. It doesn't show up at all. But this one has blown mics. So good luck testing volume up and down beyond the switches. <laughs> Well, you can at least test out the switches, though. So that's something. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Got it. Um, all right. And uh, then Chris Vera. Oh, you are muted. Oops. I'm muted, and you're muted. So I got the uh, Angular 10 um, task done. Submitted a pull request. Um, Chris took a look at it. I did change the, the base branch, Chris. Um, so um, is there anything else you needed for me to? OK, so if you want to approve that, then um, that will go into the next version of Selene. 
then um, I was going to start on the tagging UI, but after a discussion today, um, <clears throat> I will be going back to the um, collection logic and changing how we name um, the audio files we collect. So um, that'll be my next task that I'll get done this week. So tagging was included, the tagging UI was included in the sprint, but it's not gonna, I'm not gonna get to it <laughs> between now and Friday. So um, I, may get, I may get it started after I get this new hashing algorithm done, but um, I will not finish it. Okay. Uh, and Derek. Hey guys, I've got a little helper here, so bear with me. Um, I've I got a uh, stuff running on the printer for the SJ two forty, so all goes well. We can take a look at that on Friday. Um, I did a little bit more work on the GUI tagger. Um, just there was a couple things that we talked about from Monday with Chris and I that were left to wrap up, although. There's, there's a lot that's done. Um, so I'm not, not blocking him there. And it sounds like he's not going to get to work on it until next week anyway. Um, then uh, I've been sourcing a lot of little things here and there. Uh, one of the things is this, these little rubber mounts and stuff that I'm using. I'm trying to find some off-the-shelf stuff to um, mount the speakers and also little tiny ones to mount our boards and stuff for mechanical decoupling. Um, that'll, in theory, uh, reduce vibrations and such uh, from, you know, working their way from the acoustic chamber up to the mics. So little details like that that I hadn't quite gotten to and won't really be included in the first pass of the first prototype, but I'd like to get to quickly on the second one. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. So let's see, I think the only thing I probably won't get to, there's a couple of things with rollover in here that you know we're kind of blocked on until we hear from them. Um, and then the, uh, <laughs> then the, um, the, the re-speaker testing uh, bit where I was gonna make a kind of an adapter to allow the dev kit version, the new version and the re-speaker um, for apples to apples, I, I'm not going to get to that this week. Other than that, yeah, let's uh, be excited to look at the show you guys the prototype on Friday. Awesome, that sounds fun. Um, I have a quick question for you on the mounting holes uh, change for the latest rev. Uh, would it be completely useless if we uh, had a version of the board that did not have those mounting locations changed? Would we be able to use those boards? Oh yeah, so they're okay. Yeah, they're totally usable for our, for where we're at right now. Okay, it's just this. So the board holes are about the the holes are too far away from where the buttons are. So I moved them closer to where the buttons are, and the boards were flexing too much, in my mm, opinion. That's what it when was. you're okay. doing the the button presses. Um, but it's not. I, I don't think they're going to break. It's just they flex. You know, for the real product, is too much flex. Got it. Okay. Um, but for now, it's not a, really a problem. <clears throat> okay, great. Yeah, I've got, I'm cooking up a scheme with uh, with Kevin on the next rev, so uh, I want to okay. know. Okay, but yeah, I, if we need to push that off for the next after that, I think that would be fine. Okay, got it. Okay, thanks. Rumor um, has it some of the children are becoming YouTube sensations. Yeah, has anybody, right. Has anybody considered? Uh, Maybe making money off them as influencers? <laughs> That's way outside my expertise. <clears throat> I'm, I'm happy if I can get them to go to school. So, um, oh, I just noticed that I'm cutting off half of your heads in this uh, video recording, so I apologize for that. Um, people on the bottom row. Uh, oh, technology. Um, so I guess that's it for this week then. Uh, as promised, a quick update, and uh, we'll be back on Friday to um, see how things went and uh, start thinking about the next sprint, unless there's anything else from anyone.
Michael, did you want to stay on and talk to me real quick about the volume issue, or you just want sure. to let it go? And yeah, let's go ahead. Let's do that. Okay. All right. Thanks. Bye for now. Bye.